What's up guys, it's Simon. So today is day 4 of Yulmas, and I'm going to be talking about air magic. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to talk about um, the four winds um, in regards to air magic. It's also called wind magic. And then I'm going to go over uh, prayer feathers and how you can use those in your air magic. And then I'm going to go into um, the feather colors. Um, and then I'm going to go into the rest of the correspondences that I have for air. <clears throat> now, this is a pretty big compilation. Um, so, but I don't necessarily believe that it's all of the uh, correspondences for air. It's just all the... Col col all the compilations, all the correspondences that I personally have and that I use. So without further ado, let's get started. Um, so the North Wind is ruled by Boreas. Um, another name for him is Ophion. And this is the Wind of Death and Change, um, which brings about destruction and um, cold, sudden, or unexpected change. This wind is generally, um, brings that unfavorable result. Um, it can vary in multiple degrees. It, it you know, <clears throat> the sky's the limit. Um, but these, um, results that are brought is stuff that you have to work through. So, you can kind of see a correlation to the energy of Saturn. So, if you were to put a planetary... Um, correspondence to the North Wind, it would probably be Saturn. Um, pagans attribute the power of elimination of bad habits to this wind and associate it with the color um, brown or black and the hour of midnight. These winds are associated with level-headedness, so use this time to practice spell work for financial management and organization. Um, so, types of spell work that you can do with North Wind is um, things regarding to the body, growth, material gain, money, creativity, um, most likely on a physical level, financial level. Mm. Uh, in regards to birth and death, um, most likely a physical birth. <clears throat> Silence, rocks, so uh, doing some maybe enchanting rocks or what have you. Uh, standing stones, crystals, jewels, metal, rich, um, becoming rich rather, treasures, runes, so we could do rune magic, uh, earthing, grounding or centering, um, anything about working with the mysteries and the dark, um, things having to do with any type of industry, uh, possessions and prosperity, wisdom and practical wisdom, and teaching. So practical wisdom would be like common sense. Teachings would be um, any um, divine knowledge, um, profound ancient wisdom. And then wisdom would just be um, learning how to take care of yourself in regards to nature. That could be one way. Um, the actions that you could do for this wind um, are burying, planting, making images in the earth or sand. <clears throat> so what you, what you can do is, um, based on those actions, uh, you can take some dirt, you can, um, if you make a sigil in the earth or sand, you can scoop up that sigil, so to speak, and throw it into the north wind. Or, you can take the energy of the North Wind and put it into the action of burying, so the energy is in what it is, whatever it is that you're burying or planting. Um, so that's two ways. You can uh, take the dirt and give it up to the wind, or take the wind down to the dirt. So obviously this wind is associated with the element of Earth, so you're going to do all Earth-related magics and um, in this direction of the wind. Oof. Can't turn the page. So the east wind is ruled by uh, 
Euros, I think it's pronounced. This is the wind of renewed life and intellect. Euros is the bringer of rain. Uh, rain is thought to be generally um, about bringing favorable change. This wind is symbolic of improvements. Um, it's associated with the color white or yellow and the hour of dawn. This is associated with transformation and new beginnings. So use this time to practice spell work involving all things new. So this would be a good um, win to use for wanting to bring about a new job or a new relationship. Any new beginning. So spell work, um, things in regards to new beginnings. Again, we have that creation, uh, the mind, uh, all things mental. So this is a good... Um, when to use to help you um, through your studies and test. Uh, intuitive and psychic work. Knowledge. Abstract learning. So abstract learning could be like um, learning about quantum physics, um, the seven planes of existence, uh, stuff of that nature. The twelfth plane. Stuff like that. Wind and breath. So um, I'm assuming that has to do with like your own breathing. Inspiration, hearing, harmony, herbal knowledge, plant growth. That's interesting. Why wouldn't that be on the north one? I would probably actually switch that over to the north one because that didn't seem to make sense to me. Finding lost things, telepathy. You decide about that one. Memory, contact with the angels. Okay. Understanding, unlocking secrets of the dead. Zen meditation, brainstorming. Um, and then, I guess I accidentally rewrote beginnings, because <laughs> I rewrote that at the beginning. Ironic, huh? Uh, actions are writing new spells, creating a new ritual, finding new avenues on your path. Um, and of course, there are other things you could do, so you could, um, uh, maybe create a new potion, or, um, uh, create a new magic powder. Uh, the sky is the limit, you know. Uh, air is the element that this wind is associated with. So that would be um, the element that you're working with. So this is basically air on air. So the first one was earth on air. And this one is the south wind. So it's obviously going to be fire. Um, this is ruled by Nodus or Nodus. This brings about negative works to fruition. Um, oh, excuse me, this brings negative works to fruition and is associated with cursing or acts of deception. Um, this wind is also associated with purification and many claim it to be useful for all types of spell work. So you can see that it has um, a dual aspect. Um, you can use it for your negative workings because of that heat and fire, but you can also use it um, to spike um, speed towards your spell work. <laughs> And success. Um, this is associated with the color red um, or orange and the hour of midday or noon. This is also a. S Why do I have that star? I don't know why I have that star there. This is associated with spells for love, lust, and passion as well. Again, you have that heat. Uh, this wind gives us vitality and gives us vitality for spell work um, and for banishings. Oh, this, excuse me, I kind of messed up on my writing here. Um, this wind gives us vitality for spell works having to do with banishings, jealousy, and selfishness from the self. And, and should be performed during this time. Yeah, during the time of midday. Or at least when the south wind is blowing. So, spell work is going to be... Um, use it to add power to all your spells. Um, things having to do with heat. Now, that could be physical heat or um, spiritual heat, magical heat, psychological heat, you name it. Emotional heat, um, energy, and raw energy. Uh... Spirit, flame, blood, 
So blood magic is good to use for this, probably because of the right association. Healing, uh, candle flames, sun eruptions, freedom, change, perception, sexuality, love, passion, authority, strength, work, uh, physical exercise, arts, creativity, faith, and power. Actions are making aphrodisiac potions and incense, make a bonfire or a cauldron fire. And um, you can also do uh, pyromancy, which is fire scrying. Again, as this I said earlier, and it's been said throughout, this is the element of fire. So you have um, earth on air, air on air, fire on air. And the last one is the west wind, which is ruled by Zephyrus. This is obviously the water wind. Um, this is the wind of love and fertility. So this is going to be more about relationships, whereas the other one uh, could be more about... Yeah, this is going to be more about your emotions and um, solidifying relationships, whereas this is going to be kind of like... Um, the south one could be more for like a one-night stand. <laughs> hey. We all at least thought about it. Um, Zephyrus is associated with fertility and love, and many old tales depict him as bisexual. I did not know that. This one is also associated with healing and persuasiveness. The color is blue or gray, and the hour is dusk. Um, intuition in the natural... Oh, intuition is natural. No, intuition in the natural witch is strong during these winds. So when you have a west wind going on, um, this spikes your intu intuitive abilities. Um, so basically, take advantage of this and practice spell work, which involves using your inner strength, um, and basically psychic abilities and stuff like that. So spells for love, fertility, healing... Um, on the emotional level, so you have physical healing for fire, um, or even um, maybe like a romantic healing. Uh, and cleansings for here, emotions in general, um, healing sorrow, intuition, oh, plant smell. Hmm, not quite sure what that means. Um, I wrote these a long time ago. Um, pleasure, marriage, friendship, happiness, sleep, dreams, reflection, security, and as I said earlier, psychic abilities. Actions are um, cleanse and... Oh, cleanse and outdoor altar space. Oh, I don't know how to pronounce this. Oinomancy, I think it's called. And this is divination from the wind. So, since your psychic abilities are heightened at this time, this would be the best wind to do um, wind divination, or as I said, oinomancy. Oinomancy, I think it's pronounced. Um, you could also do hydromancy, um, which is a water scrying. Uh, rituals for fertility, marriage, or healing. Emotional healing. Okay. So... Now that we ha now I can't remember where I found that, but um I think if you type in wind magic you might be able to find something of the nature. So now I'm gonna go into prayer feathers. This is a Native American practice. Now I know some people don't pray. I'm one of them. I know um, specifically that the Lady Grave Dancer doesn't pray. Excuse me. I also don't pray. For me, praying seems um, kind of redundant for a witch. Um, it just doesn't make sense to me. Why would I ask for something when I know I have the the magical means to make it happen? So, for me, I still use the term prayer because I can't think of another one. Um, but for me, prayer means um, intention setting. And um, sometimes also energy work. So, I have this note saying mitakiwasin, which is um, which means all of our relations. But I don't remember why I have that written there. I don't know. Maybe it was just a Native American note or something. So basically, oh, 
I don't know if um, 13 Moons still has it, but I know that that is where I found um, this information originally. So I'm going to show you the um, prayer prayers that I made. These are all wild harvested by myself, and um, these are some wood beads on a lavender string with a feather there. So basically what you do is you take your prayer feathers um, and with both hands and you whisper or put it to your heart and think or put it to your mind or whatever. And basically you're putting your intentions, your prayer, your energy, your goals, your needs, your wants. Um, you could even put a spell and treat it like a spell bottle where you're putting your energy in this. And then on a windy day, um, depending on what intentions you put in here, you might want to pick one of the four winds. So for example, if you're trying to curse someone or banish someone um, on a south wind day you can um with these intentions that you put in there you can hang it up on a tree and then brother wind will take the intentions out to spirit oh here's where it is okay so here's the ritual so you've put in your attention you've chosen which wind you want to use it for in regards to your attention um you have the branch, I mean the tree ready, you, well not ready, but you have a tree that you, um, that you can tie it on. And um, so now what you do is when the wind comes, close your eyes and with your hands raised say, Mitaki Oasen, which means all our relations. So you're basically connecting with all of nature at this point. Then give gratitudes and walk away. Um, at this point you've already um, before you said Mitaki Owasan, you've already tied this to the tree. Um, so remember to leave your gratitudes. And um, after the wind has died down, untie your prayer, um, prayer, your prayer feathers and bring them inside. Um, basically, the wind has stripped them clean of all the intentions. So you don't necessarily have to worry about smudging it. Of course, if you feel the need to, you can do so, but you don't have to. So, now I'm going to go into um, feather color magic. So, uh, white is for purification. Oh, and feather color magic is a little, just a bit different than um, regular color magic, which is typically attributed to candles. So, anyway, as I was saying, white is for purification, spirituality, hope, peace, protection, and moon blessings. So, as you can see, that's the the top one right there. Pink attracts love. Red, right there, is for physical vitality, good fortune, and courage. Oh, courage and life. Uh, orange is for energy, health, success, and abundance. Yellow is for cheerfulness, mental alertness, sun blessings. Green is for prosperity, money, growth, and fertility. And green and red is for financial matters. Because you have, you're you bringing about that good fortune and, and prosperity and money and stuff like that. All together in one feather. Now if you don't have a green and red feather, you can always take a green feather and take a red feather and put them together. Like tie them together and work with them both. I don't know if this works with uh, artificial feathers. I mean, I guess so, because, you know, it's about your intention. But I personally like to use real feathers. Um, I kind of feel that it's just more powerful that way. Blue feathers are for psychic awareness, mental abilities, and communication. Brown, uh, which I have two of, actually. I have one right there in front of the red and one in front of the black and the brown is for stability respect earthing or grounding or centering hearth and home brown and black is for balance between physical and spiritual life brown and white which is this little one right there is for happiness and invisibility 
towards enemies. Uh, brown and red is for animal healing. And that's because you have um, <clears throat> the hearth and home from the brown. And you have the physical vitality from the red. Um, black is for... Right there, you can see it. Uh, mystical wisdom that comes with true spiritual initiation. Um, iridescent, which would be um, black bird feathers, is for mystical insight. Black and white is for union and protection. Black and purple is for deep spirituality. Black, white, and blue, which would be um, a blue jay feather, bring change and po potent protection. Excuse me. Gray, which is right behind the brown and white one, right there, is for um, peace and neutrality, and gray and white is for hope, balance, and harmony. So, <clears throat> now I'm going to go into the rest of the correspondences for Air Magic. So, this is um, the primary day. Oh, about to drop my book. It is um, Wednesday, and the uh, planet is Mercury. Um, this is a good time to use um, magic powders. Do I have some over here? Do where is it? There it is. Okay. So, this is a protection powder blend, I think sure it is. Yep. Oof. And, um, this has a base of arrowroot powder. Now, arrowroot powder is white, so again, you have that color magic. Um, for me, um, white is protection, and that's kind of what I use it for in regards to magic powders. So, the spell and intention that I'm doing will be protected because it has that white color in it. Um, also, uh, arrowroot, um, magical properties are for luck and success. So then you're bringing that towards your spell as well. So I really encourage everyone to use arrowroot powder as your base for your magical powders. It's also very fine, so it's gonna carry off into the wind very well. If you don't want to get it or you can't find it or what have you, um, the second best option would probably be cornstarch. Um, or flour. Just, um, all-purpose white flour. Um. So, this is a good time to make your incense. And also, you can do spells with incense. Um. Okay, so, right now we're in Yule. So, a good incense to burn could be pine. Or cinnamon. So, if you wanted to bring about good health. Or even prosperity, you could burn pine. Um, and, uh, if you wanted to bring about new, uh, let's see, what could you attribute that with? Uh, that could be for the North Wind, because that has to do with, um, money. Um, but if you wanted it for health reasons, then you could, um, do it during the South Wind. <clears throat> and keep in mind, um, if a wind is, like, Southwest then that's a great time to do a spell for a relationship because you have that south wind energy which is going to speed up the spell, empower the spell, and then you have that west wind energy for love and um, relationships. So you could do a um, burn cinnamon, give it even more extra power. Who knows, maybe you'll find a lover within two days to a week. Um, I'm not saying that's how long it will take, but... As an example of how quickly it could happen, um, depending on how powerful your intention is, and um, <clears throat> if anyone's available, and when you do your spell, um, that's a that's a good time. You can use it that way. Don't think, oh no, it's not south or it's not just west that you can't do a spell. Um, combine the energies, like the wind is combined, and use it to your advantage. Uh, this is a good time to. Uh, Honor the sylphs and pixies and all other air spirits like um, angels. Um, and the reason why I say sylphs and pixies and not fairies is because 
the fae or fairies technically involve salamanders, sylphs, pixies, undines, mermaids, all of the merfolk, and gnomes and trolls, and all of them. It's kind of like it's kind of like uh, witches is the umbrella term, and pagan is an umbrella term. And then you have all these individual groups. The fairies is the same thing. Uh, this is also, um, air is associated with Lord Peralda, which is the elemental king of air, and Archangel Raphael. Uh, this is a good time to do health, especially if you're doing it on a Wednesday. Uh, this is a good time for also, um, wisdom, since you're working with the element of air, um, health, wisdom, anything to do with the mind and memory, this is good for quick spells. Um, not necessarily immediate, but um, definitely good for quick. Each element has their own speed, and the element of air is on the quick side. Not necessarily immediate like fire, but um, a little faster than water, which is slow. Um, and then earth would be um, very slow. Uh... So this is good for creating smudges and incense, if I didn't already say that. Um, this is good to charge candles for later use. Um, if you uh, charge a candle with the wind, it's great to use for um, sparking up inspiration, creativity, or just the uh, being alert and focused. Which you could burn, you could, um, if you have a yellow candle, or even a white candle, you can tie it to a tree, let the wind infuse it with energy. And then um, when you're taking a test or whatever, or you're studying for a test, you can burn it down when you're um, trying to study, and it'll help you stay alert, and um, it will spike up your memory skills. This is also a good time for communication, anything having to do with law, um, whether it be natural law or man law, um, socializing, um, so friendships, um, pushing stuff away, so basically doing a banishment. Um, and that's with air and wind, period. Um, now, you could obviously bring something towards you. Um, but typically, um, if you're creating a substance like a powder or something, and you release it, the wind carries it away. So it's really good for banishments. And if you're wanting to bring something to you, um, then maybe stand where the wind is blowing at your face and then have the like don't have the powder where it blows in your face maybe have it like towards your feet or something so that way it comes towards you or um just work with the wind itself as in as um having it bring something to you uh this is a good time for wand crafting or consecrating um you could also try and make an athame or consecrate the athame you already have. So, that's all my correspondences for air magic. Um, I hope it inspired you. Uh, do forgive me for the little stuttering and stuff. I also have a stuffy nose, so it's kind of hard for me to talk, so I hope you understood everything that I said. Uh, if you don't, feel free to uh, leave a question down below. Um, and, uh, Shout out to Elder Brimstone, who um, started, well, as far as I know, she started this Yulmas, um 20-day thing. So, give a shout out to her. I'm going to put her channel link in the description box below and go check her out and subscribe. She's really awesome. She does a lot of um, crafts, especially for this Yule Moss um, tag. So, um, yeah, that's all. Have some fun and do some witchcraft. I really want to hear um, if you guys have any um, other suggestions on um, air magic correspondences. Or if you've done anything that I've mentioned. Um, write a little comment below and share your story with everybody. Um, so thank you for watching and as always, blessed be my dear witchlings.